Okay, so the medium tank line uh, of the US tank tree starts with the M2 medium tank. And this tank is quite odd looking, but it's uh, it has a purpose as to why it's looking so odd. This was actually the first medium tank that the US Army built and designed. It was supposed to fight infantry, mainly. Uh, although it actually has an anti-tank gun as main armament. It was mainly uh, intended to fight or fire uh, HE shells. The main weapons on this tank was actually uh, two things. One thing, the armor, that you can see here is quite oddly sloped. And these things, the machine guns. And you also have two machine guns around the back. So uh, this thing was actually built for rolling over trenches and that's why it's a bit longer than uh, its contemporary light tank which is, has the same kind of suspension uh, setup but it's a bit shorter than the M2. The M2 is a bit longer, it has another set of uh, road wheels here in the suspension. That would make it better to traverse trenches in uh, World War One type of uh, warfare. So the oddly shaped armor at the front is also uh, designed to deflect shots down into the trenches or out to the sides to kill uh, enemy infantry that might be nearby this tank. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, yeah, it's an anti-infantry tank mostly. But in the game, this tank can actually fight other tanks. Although the, the armor isn't all that thick, it's quite well sloped, so it does actually bounce shells from time to time uh, at its rank. Uh, it has a battle rating of 1.3, so that means this thing will mostly face uh, reserve tanks and so on. But the army wasn't satisfied with this thing uh, coming into World War II, since they realized that the Second World War wasn't going to be an immobile war with trenches and heavy artillery pounding at the enemy's lines from two kilometers behind the lines. Um, the Second World War would be a mobile war where tanks and air forces would play a major role and even the infantry would be mechanized and moving fast over the plains. And if you've been reading up on some World War II history, you, you get the idea. So, what could they do to change the situation? They had these tanks defending the homeland, and this tank against a Panzer III with a long barrel 50mm gun would stand no chance. So, they used the suspension and the hull for this tank, and they made this thing, the M3 Lee as a stopgap tank. It's the same hull and the same suspension, as almost the same engine as well. And this thing was up armored, it had better armor, and it had a gun specialized in fighting infantry, and then it had two turrets with uh, two machine guns and an uh, anti-tank cannon, the same kind of cannon that the M2 had to fight tanks with. And this thing was actually it wasn't designed to be the mainstay of the American uh, tank forces. It was just made for as a stopgap measure until they got the next tank ready for uh, the war. And that tank would be the M4A1 Stuart. No, <laughs> the M4A1 uh, Sherman. Although the US Army didn't really call it Sherman. They just called it the M4A1. So this thing had some significant features that was revolutionary for the American tanks. It had only one turret with one main gun. It had a dual purpose gun that could fire HE shells as well as AP rounds. And it actually did significant damage to enemy tanks, this gun. The 37mm of the M3 Lee didn't really penetrate 
German tanks at longer ranges when it came across them in Africa. So it was very important for uh, the US Army to get a tank with one very potent gun against these uh, German tanks. So enter the M4A1 in the end of 1942. So at the Battle of El Alamein, these things served on the British side and they did very well against uh, German tanks because this thing was actually better armored than the German tanks. The German tanks had boxy armor unsloped whereas the M4A1 had sloped frontal hull armor and decent turret armor as well as a superior gun to the German tanks. So that caused a bit of a panic uh, in the German lines so they had to uh, upgrade their tanks in order to face the upcoming threat of these tanks on the battlefield. So this was the first Sherman and after that came the M4. <laughs> so it's a bit odd. You, know, you have the M4 and then you have the M4A1. The M4 was a tank that had, instead of uh, a bubble-like frontal hull plate, they found out that if you use a single piece of welded armor as the front, it would take less time to make the tank at the factory, and it would be better protected against enemy uh, anti-tank shells than the M4A1 was. However, um, they forgot to take care of these two bubbles up here, or bubble-like uh, extensions of the hull. What these things were in effect on the battlefield was that they were huge weak spots on this tank. So that's why they have added armor plates here, <laughs> to increase the sloping of the hull. And although it's not really as sloped as this plate here, it uh, increases the chance that the frontal hull will bounce a shell if you hit the driver's and the radio operator's uh, bubble hatch, or whatever you call it. So um, this was the first step in order to uh, modify the M4A1 into a very good working tank on the battlefield and that was the M4 Sherman. It still had the same turret and the same gun as the same uh, secondary armament, a coercial machine gun and a bow machine gun, but it had some uh, huge improvements in the way of uh, an improved engine as well as better sloped hull armor. And uh, it also has cast homogeneous armor that was straight and that made it uh, easier to make. After that M4 tank came the M4A2 which was basically the same tank but they had corrected a few things. They corrected the weak spots on the front. You see here this tank is sloped area without any weak spots although the sloped area is a bit steeper than on the M4 but it's lacking the weak spots uh, where the radio operator and the driver sits and that makes uh, the tank a bit better all around and it's not presenting weak spots to the enemy tankers so uh, yeah other than that this is more or less the same tank I guess that the M4A2 has a slightly better engine than the M4. Yeah, it has a better engine uh, by 10 horsepower, so it's not a significant change, but it's still a bit better. I'm guessing this tank will be a bit more mobile in the game. So these three M4 tanks, they're often called the first generation of Shermans, and after that came uh, the second generation of Shermans, and those tanks are these uh, three down here. And those were the response to active battle testing of these initial models. And then the factories tried to respond to the criticism that they had received from 
the battlefield. So here's the M4A1, literally the first M4 model to see service. These tanks would uh, see service until 1945 and the end of the war. But what they have done with the tank is that they have upgunned the tank into an effective tank versus tank uh, weapon. Uh, the first M4 Sherman that had the shorter 75 barrel the gun was uh, soon inadequate to uh, fight German tanks. Once the German tanks had adapted to the situation and they had gained modifications that would give them the upper hand in the armament race of the Second World War. When the German Panzer III's and Panzer IV's and even Tigers showed up with thicker armor and better guns, uh, the M4A1 was obsolete in effect, so they had to change the model and give it a better gun, as well as a different turret as well. Uh, this turret is called the T23, and uh, that turret had a little better uh, protection, as well as uh, two hatches where the crewmen could peek out from the turret and it had a much better 76 millimeter gun as well as uh, a wet stowage for the uh, for the ammunition so the ammunition was actually stowed in the side of the tanks uh, together with liquid or water that would cool down the shells if the shells would be hit by an armor piercing round or enemy fire or artillery or whatever um, that would increase the chance that the crew would survive the hit and the tank wouldn't catch fire at the first uh, piercing shot that was so common before most tanks uh, brewed up at first impact from a German gun and if you look at the tank from the side like this there's not many places that you can hit a Sherman and do no damage down here and then maybe between uh, the legs here <laughs> and under uh, the gunner and loader. A shot here would just go straight through and out the other side but if you hit the tank on any other surface you will blow it up more or less or it will be very likely that you will knock out uh, either crews or the whole tanks or the whole tank with uh, ammunition fires or uh, fuel fires or the engine exploding or something like that so yeah the wet stowage was an improvement but it didn't really uh, save all that many Sherman tanks <laughs> but it was an improvement for the crew and that gave the crew better morale when fighting uh, German tanks but these tanks even though they were changed and up modified to in the second generation they uh, took a lot of casualties in 1942 and 45 in Western Europe during the uh, Second World War. So looking at the M4A2 and the uh, M4A3 they're basically the same tank and they play more or less the same except for this tank the M4A3 76W HVSS Sherman. Uh, this tank has an upgraded engine uh, here 500 uh, horsepower instead of 410 that A2 model has and this tank also has an upgraded transmission it's called the HVSS and that made the tank more effective and it used its horsepower in a better way than the other tanks so this tank should be more mobile as well as it should pack a, a good punch with this 76 millimeter gun that was actually uh, designed for anti-tank warfare only but it can also fire HE rounds as well so it's it's a much better dual purpose gun after the first generation of Shermans and the second generation of Shermans you come to the M26 Pershing and when it arrived it was labeled as a heavy tank but uh, seeing the weight of 41 tons, it later was uh, modified to a medium tank. 
And this tank was actually uh, the answer to the German's tire tank. <laughs> The U.S. Army Board realized that they needed a tank capable of fighting the Tiger. So they designed a heavy tank with uh, a turret that could mount the 19mm M3 cannon. A cannon that was uh, powerful enough to knock out a Tiger tank at longer ranges. So um, in comes the Pershing. And the Pershing was actually quite good. Um, it was heavy and slow, but uh, you see here it has the same kind of horsepower. It probably has the same. Oh, what's happened to the to the graphics? It has the same engine as the M4A3, or it has the same horsepower. So this tank was overloaded with stuff, and it was too heavy, and it only saw service during uh, the last few months of the Second World War and then later on in Korea. And although it did a fine job of knocking out German tanks and later on uh, knocking out T-34-85s in Korea, these tanks were too few in numbers to make a difference and there were other tanks coming up. Uh, after this tank that would be better suited for the same role and those tanks would be the new medium tank line uh, the Patton tanks M46 and the M47 and then later on the M48 and the M60 Pattons we'll have to wait and see whether those tanks are released in War Thunder at the future date and I reckon these tanks will be quite good they have a, a good gun with some good velocity and they have a huge upgrade in horsepower for roughly the same weight as the M26 the M26 weights uh, 41.5 ton the M46 weights only uh, 2 tons more and this tank weights 2 tons more than M46 but what the patterns share is a very good engine sitting at 810 horsepower and my guess although I can't say for certain but I think that in this game the M46 and the M47 will be mobile tanks uh, medium tanks that you will you will be able to use them as skirmishers and if you get a chance you will knock out tanks with those uh, 90 millimeter guns I'm a bit uncertain however if these tanks will be a dangerous opponent against the T-54 because they have weak spots in the front and they have uh, shot traps like here if you hit below the gun the shot will automatically bounce into the tank from above and kill the crew or a shot hitting the front hull might bounce up into the gun and then down into the crew compartment but all round these tanks should be they should be good I'm seeing uh, that they have a minus 10 degree vert vertical guidance and uh, that makes the patent tanks good at hold down positions or if they cross a ridge they will easily get a shot off before the T-54 get a, an opportunity for a shot since their turret is uh, a bit flatter and more wide but you have to pay for that in the way of uh, protection on the crew and so on so uh, I guess I'll have to do some testing, unlock these tanks and then play them in the game before I can come with a final verdict. But looking at the paper stats, I'm kind of thinking that these tanks might be uh, a bit thinly armored. Although, you see here the effective thickness is uh, 178 millimeter on the hull, but you have uh, less armor here and almost no armor here at all even the effective thickness is uh, quite weak although uh, around the gun on the turret is uh, a piece of armor or an area that will probably uh, bounce shells but I don't know um, I'm uncertain when it comes to these tanks I think that T-54s might get the upper hand on the patterns but uh, we'll just have to wait and see I'll have to test it out and to 
to see whether that's the case or not. So over to the heavy tanks. 